The first thing you should know about my friend Andrew is that for Christmas, he received at his request a harmonica. Although he has no great musical acumen, nor any training, nor has he shown any interest ever in performing live for an audience, Andrew wanted a harmonica. I've never even known him to care about Blues Traveler, despite regularly hearing my rendition of this one time I hung out with John Popper, but now Andrew has an harmonica. I have no idea how it's been going because he's been busy with other things lately and we've got a lot of catching up to do, but I wonder about it all the time. The next thing you should know about Andrew is that he is unlikely to shove that harmonica into his mouth, get it stuck, and post a TikTok video about it. But just today, while I was writing this, a young woman did just that, and the internet is all abuzz about it. Way to be on the bubble, Mr. Bridges. Let's talk harmonicas. Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> did you see that? Did, did you no. see that news article? Your your internet wasn't blowing up with that, Andrew? Uh-uh. No, I think yeah. you and I get different internet. I think you're right. <laughs> the first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm is that she's an evangelist. Of course, Mrs. Philholm is Catholic, and all Catholics have a subconscious imperative to convert non-believers for a little extra credit with the big man. But that's not what I'm talking about. No matter who you are, Mrs. Philholm will talk your ear off about all of her favorite things, whether it's her Roomba, a new ergonomic chair, a bidet, or even her friend Andrew. All of these things are the best, and if you're not on the train yet, you soon will be, or you're stupid. The next thing you should know is that this quality in Mrs. Philholm can make her an expensive friend to have as you learn about all of the new must-have gadgets, but it's worth it to have such a strong supporter in your corner. Once you've won her trust and made it onto her list of highly recommended things and people, you can do no wrong. Welcome to Half My Age, a weekly show in which a 25-year-old adult and a 50-year-old child help each other make sense of the world. Huh. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. I feel like I've been doing good work on these cold opens. I think what so we should I. do... We're brilliant. We should, we should scrap all of the post-cold open content, and then we should do a super cut of our good cold opens, and that should be what this podcast is. That sounds like a TikTok video right there. Because <laughs> we could mix it. You could do a little dubstep version of it, our cold opens. I'm down with Gosh, that. Gosh, you, I don't know what happened. I think you went to bed old and you woke up 14. I think you've just got... <laughs> Mixing uh, TikTok. You said TikTok three times and we just started. Yeah. You're very excited about the TikTok. I'm not excited about the TikTok. I think it's funny that when I was typing in harmonica and thinking about your harmonica, if you're going to sip coffee, I'm going to blow my nose, but I'm going to do it away from I'm, the air. I'm Hold on. I'm slurping my coffee right in front of the microphone for everyone to hear. I've been having That's some. I've fine. been having some trouble sleeping, so I've been doing a lot of coffee drinking, and I think that makes my sleep worse. I think I'm on an oh, unhealthy... Um, self-perpetuating bad sleep cycle. I bet that's right. I bet that's right, boy. I was just listening to someone talking about how not drinking in January, you know, got her back into, just like how when she was saying, I've been drinking so much lately that I was just sort of low grade, always thought I was tired or had the flu. And then when I did um, sober dry January, uh, I felt better in every oh, excellent. <laughs> she's like and then if i have two glasses of wine because she said she cheated a couple times she's like oh i feel like such shit the next day yeah i think that might be right with any of those substances caffeine or any of it tobacco for me mm-hmm. because i have not been completely clean on that i do allow myself like i said to smoke just so that if i has anything changed since we last spoke last last time you were allowing yourself up to three cigarettes yeah, a day about the, yeah about the same thing but the truth is that when i take those three cigarettes i don't feel good the next day mm-hmm. i can tell the difference it's, or the weird thing is if i'm like i'll go i'll be really great and i don't smoke a cigarette until the evening and then there've been a lot of days lately when i haven't even been going out as much and doing comedy i've just been really making up on work stuff since my dad died and i feel like i lost you know work time so i've been humping it at the computer and, you know, I'll go, okay, I deserve Humping it. Humping it at the computer. That's something entirely different, Phil Holm. Is it? I think so. Humping no. it at the computer. Okay. I've never watched porn in my life. <laughs> I just said that recently to somebody and they couldn't believe it. So when I, all right, I got to watch what I say. I don't understand those things. Um, Anyway, when I go up and go, okay, that's it. I deserve a break. I'm going to go out and smoke half a cigarette. And then I, it's stunning how awful I feel yeah. thereafter. So have that's you, good to know. Have you um, moved out of the smoker's flu phase of quitting? I don't know. I mean, I think so. My voice sounds like it's mostly back, but 
I'm real phlegmy still. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't tell if that's just the hostile environment of Denver, Colorado. I'm often phlegmy in the in the winter, especially. Uh, I'm phlegmy all the time. Okay. Yeah, me too. So I, I can't tell. I wake up in the morning, and maybe it's uh, sleeping with a cat that I'm allergic to or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, my morning shower, like the the first three minutes of it, are me making terrible retching like yeah, noises, okay, right. try, trying to clear the sinuses. Yeah. Well, you came early today, and that was one of my problems. You saw the look on my face. I was like, okay, I'm not. Were you done. in there clearing your sinuses? It kinda. I was like, I'm not quite ready for a podcast because today. By the way, do you want to know what that noise is? Listeners, that's my fancy insulated metal coffee cup. Oh, that's very nice. With a metal straw, so I don't kill turtles. And um, <laughs> you could really kill a turtle with a metal straw. You really could. That would be stabbed. Can you worthy. imagine that? That if that turtle had a metal straw up its nose, it wouldn't be alive. <sighs> it could. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> the physics. I have so much to talk about. Anyway, um, what are they saying? Oh, right. So you came, and yes, I was still hacking up stuff because yes, that's my morning. Um, so see, I still feel, and I think I got an actual. Honest to God, Ed Cold last week, where there was an a Ed lot cold? of an Ed Cold, and where there was a lot of clear phlegm <laughs> coming out my face, and so you I got thought your, there was your a cold. knickers in a lorry, and you got yeah. yourself a little bit of an Ed Cold and harmonica. And harmonica. <laughs> I th- I thought of that because when I first stopped smoking, I kept thinking of a line from Mary Poppins. I think it's the cook who says, and I kept saying it to people. You know how like they didn't know what I was referencing as usual. Sorry, that's my um phone because I'm waiting for the furnace guys, so we're gonna get some alerts. But that's not this is an alert. Oh, that's cute. It's an alert of a whale under the ocean from my cousin Nicole. Hey, Nikki. She's just saying hi. Um, what was I saying? You my sinuses. About oh, your an headache. She says it's giving me an headache, and that's how I felt after I stopped smoking. I kept saying to people, "It's giving me an headache." No one knows what I'm referencing, but to me, it's very funny. I just uh, when I think about your Ed Cold, I think about hello, 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 mm-hmm. and, and harmonica <laughs> and harmonica. Okay, so hello, hello, hello. I have an Ed Cold, and I don't know about my sinuses, but to my point, you arrived early this morning. I was very proud of myself this morning. Unlike previous mornings when we may have recorded, and I may have done comedy late, late, late the night before. Last night I did not. Got a good night's sleep. Got up, did my stretching and my bending, did my little thinking meditation, not thinking, opposite, did my little breathing, got myself a shower, Mr. Bridges. You got a shower? Made the coffee, started DJ room, but feeling pretty good about my morning and you coming at 9.30 and I was going to be right on top of it. And you came early and I had not yet done my nasal rinse, which was Mm. my final preparation for you today, listeners. I see. What you don't know is that I come... I arrive at about nine fifteen every time we record, but I'm usually in the garage setting up in the in I the she shed in the recording studio. It's an atelier. I have a little thing in the there. atelier. I do know that, but you were today here at nine eleven, and that's even a little early. And I just I had the whole thing. I came out and turned on the heater back here. I was really prepared. I know for I'm us actually today. too hot right now. I know which is that funny unusual. that happened to me earlier where I took off my coat, but that's okay. It's better than the opposite. All right, so there we are. Nasal rinse. God. Dang it, what are we supposed to be talking about? A we lot don't of have things. anything in particular uh, uh, yeah, we we're we, supposed I, to be. Harmonica, let's start there. And harmonica. Bruh. So my uh, harmonica is on my desk right now. I pick it up probably once every two days. And I do some uh, official music people, they would call it noodling, noodling. Like, like you would do on a piano. There was a sign in my high school band room that says no noodling. <laughs> because it got so insane. Like in the six minute passing period, kids would take out their instruments and noodle and it would drive the band Did anyone crazy. put a, uh, a C and an A or an, a K and an A on the Canoodling? Yeah, no canoodling. I think that's what, uh, what my high school would have in their band room if, had we had a band. You don't think it's a C? You think it's a K? Canoodling. I said C first, but I don't know. I think C is right. I don't even know. I've never, really I don't know that I've ever seen that word Gosh, in print. Speaking of coffee, right now I'm drinking my coffee and I suddenly feel very tired. Yeah. Huh. Okay, carry on. Well, talking you have an to harmonica. me is exhausting. I guess so. Damn it. You have an harmonica. You're not going to learn the harmonica by picking up it every two days and noodling. <laughs> I I put on my uh I do have the Bob Dylan I know neck it. harness. It's ins- and I I put on the whole apparatus mm-hmm. and then I do some some uh what I'll call uh harmonica exercises. Okay. Which are just uh sucking and blowing, sucking and blowing, sucking and blowing. Uh do you have a method for how you're gonna learn this? Have you looked it up on YouTube? Like how watched, where you find chords? Th- there was there was one guy, I've I watched a couple of his videos, and he is uh, he's like a good looking guy who's super talented and he intersperses all of his lessons with him doing all this crazy stuff on the harmonica and he's a real douchebag. So I'm not I'm I'm boycotting his videos now. I don't oh. I don't like them. I don't like him. Oh. Uh, I'm currently looking for a new YouTube 
inspiration. Mentor, yeah. I can find you one, but don't go to TikTok because she'll tell you. What this chick did is she put it in her mouth, like to amuse a friend or a cousin, I think. Put it, right, the whole thing in her mouth. And then it's funny because then when you mouth. breathe. I bet anybody could fit it in. It's cheeks, really. Yeah. And so then the funny thing is then when you breathe in and out, you're a harmonica, right? That's freaking funny. She couldn't get it out. She had to go to the hospital. I bet. Yeah. So that's funny. Um, Andrew, mm, all right, back up. So you put on the whole headgear. Mm-hmm. That seems so insane to me. Why is that? Well, because you don't know how to it's play. It's just like it. a necklace. It's it, well, so I'm also working it. This, you know, I'm I'm uh, oh, multitasking. It's hands free. It's hands free, so that you right. can program. I'm uh, I'm and do your work on your computer. Johnny Coder sitting there, tap tap tap, clickety clack okay. on my keyboard. All right, I understand it. Sucking and blowing. I don't know what my neighbors must think is going on. I know that's probably the whole thing. probably animal abuse. When I started writing my cold <laughs> open, to tell you the truth, the second part was going to be the the next thing you should know about Andrew is that he has two roommates, and I wanted to investigate what the roommates, whiskers, and your future bride, who is pledged her life to you now think about living with a freaking harmonica player because to me that's like joke level (laughs) bad that's like living with an improv artist well i'll tell you uh the cat gets no say he just has to deal with it i know i just wondered if he responds at all delaney has no idea because she's at work all day okay yeah weirdo so i'm not i'm not a bad roommate to my direct roommates i'm a bad neighbor that's all right we talked about your neighbors are have given you some audio scape that isn't so pleasant anyway. They they deserve it. My uh, my neighbors, the ones that that communicate by yelling at each other. Yeah, uh, they had a baby. They did, and the baby's very cute. Oh, it is. Uh, and does the I, baby yell at each other? Does the baby yell at each other? But the uh, baby does a lot of crying, yelling right back. I haven't I haven't heard the baby. Uh, there was there was like a quiet period. I think mm-hmm. when the baby was very young, when when they decided that in order to allow the baby to sleep they had to stop yelling at each yeah, other yeah uh but they're kind of they're kind of back at oh, it geez. and yeah i bet i don't know it's a, it's a, just a ni- the nice couple that lives in the corner unit uh that like to yell at each and other and that's how they communicate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i know we've talked about that it's just different than how you were raised it's different than how i was raised my parents didn't argue in front of us neither did mine Mm-mm. neither did mine and my uh i think that's that's something that's super uncommon uh you and i got it we had it so good yeah, I'm a spoiled bitch. There's no doubt about it in a, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. Okay, so this harmonica. Now, do you have any intention of learning how to play a song on it? Yes. You do. So you just need maybe a method. I need a method. I need, so the, it's so funny. When you, when you I've been thinking a lot about this in the context of programming because I would say that on my, my stage as a coder, mm-hmm. I'm uh, past like the neophyte thing. I'm mm-hmm. a, I'm I'm a fully fledged. Some people in certain areas, I'm an expert. Mm-hmm. In others, I'm I'm still new and novice and whatever. Um, but I think about the problems that I used to have in coding, and now they're so silly. Mm. You know, if if I had just known the language to use or mm. where to look, it would have been so easy. And right now, my harmonica problem is so silly, um, but I, I can't quite figure it out. Is these people? Uh, they they you say. I mean, there's harmonica tablature in the same way. There's guitar tabs, mm-hmm. which tells you which finger, which fret, it tells you which hole to blow through, mm-hmm. and they can just blow through one hole. And there's there's this. I assume there's some special mouth magic going on in order to block the other holes or to direct your air so precisely through just one of the seven holes. Uh, but I'm trying to figure out how to get a clean note, which, I which seems like am, a very basic thing. But it sure fucking does. You don't know how to do it. That uh-uh. would be where the videos start to me is, and it's well, got to be a tongue thing. It's got to be, and which the, sounds... the, the guy tried to explain it, and maybe I'm more of a visual learner than I thought. Mm-hmm. But what he said did not make sense to me. I can't. I literally can't imagine how to play the harmonica. Mm-hmm. I also can't imagine to play how to play guitar. I have taken piano lessons, so I kind of get it, but I never became a good. Piano player, I certainly never learned to sight read or play real music with real chords. Mm -hmm. And in band, as you know, I played the trombone. I'm not a good musician, but I am very thankful for my musical education. In band, our band director, like I think in middle school, I had a band director who would say, it's easy. You can only play one note at a time. You know, like you guys suck it up, shut up. All of us in this jazz band or whatever, there were no stringed instruments. There was nobody playing chords. It was one instrument at a time if you're blowing air through a horn, you know, Mm -hmm. or a flute or whatever. And um, so I cannot imagine the harmonic. I literally don't understand it. I I can't tell how you would do that. I trust that it must be learnable because people learn it. But it feels like what you'd be talking about is tongue work. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of a cool little piece of equipment, uh, like you said. Oh, there... it's amazing! I mean, I was doing some history of the harmonica study to, for this episode. Where did you it's learn? Not nothing much yet. I just started, but okay. I mean, it's kind of one of those ancient reed instruments. It is a beautiful thing. You can play both chords and individual notes on it. I kind of like the sound of a harmonica as much as we make fun of it being bagpipey and annoying. I kind of dig a harmonica. Are you kidding? So if you could suddenly be playing harmonica songs, I would love it. But I feel like there's a there's a chasm between you and that, and you have to start with. I feel like it's going to be tongue work. And as I just said, I have never watched a porno. So, but getting into tongue work sounds awfully spicy. That sounds uh, that sounds like the very beginning of a young porn star's career. Well, I'm still stuck in tongue work, but one day. Right. I'll... <laughs> I know, or I, how about this? I started on the harmonica, and the ladies go, yeet, yeet. All the ladies in the house go, harmonica, did you say? Wait, no, what? It's got to be a flexible tongue thing. It's got to be a know. deft tongue. I don't know how you isolate a hole in the harmonica, but that is where I feel like your your YouTube videos need to start, is first technique, not playing music. What are you, nuts? Well, it, it's, well. Do you like, want me to find this for you? I, would, I bet I, I, I can I find went, a tutorial. And I found, I found one guy, and he kind of he kind of turned me off the learning thing a little bit. The douchebag guy? Yes, the okay. douchebag guy. I'm it's sure like there's, there's a million guy. other good videos out there. I just need to set my mind to it. Part of the problem, like I said, is that I'm working at the same time, so I can't. <laughs> you can't also watch the learning videos. Right. I, I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be focusing on all my all my code. So I guess this would be like equivalent to I mean like it's just a distraction sort of for you. I guess it would be equivalent to I don't know. It's probably the same thing as clicking your pen on the side. Yeah, or embroidering something and it doesn't matter what it looks like or if you know how to make stitches, you're just you know, you're you're cross stitching a pillow when you're bored, right? It's kind of a, mm-hmm. a, a thing. Only it doesn't matter what it looks like at the end, I guess. It's it's just, I kind me. of feel it's like weird. there is a uh, like a psychological imperative to do something like this while I work since I don't have any coworkers in the uh-huh, same uh-huh, room. Because uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. sure. I, I came from an open office where uh, not only was I right. totally silent, but I was also really annoyed when other people weren't totally you silent. Really were, right, so this is just exercising the right to be noisy in whatever way you want. I think so. No matter how annoying. Okay, that's fine. And also, <laughs> you know, when I've been working alone in the daytimes... Grinding away at the computer. You just been you just been blowing notes on your trombone, huh? Well, no, no, <laughs> no. That's not so hands free. But no, what I really is there are a lot of hours where it's totally silent, right? I mean, I actually turn everything off because I need to. I'm concentrating, mm-hmm. and then you do kind of go, "Whoa, do I need a noise? Right? Uh, do I need DJ Roomba in the background just moving around so that I? Yeah, so maybe it's just that to break up the monotony of working all alone in a Can, cubicle. Do you work well with music in the background? It depends. Depends on what I'm doing. Largely depends. And depends on the kind of music. What I'm doing depends on the kind of music. Largely depends. Yeah. I, I mean, for your voiceover work, you, you surely can't. Certainly but, not. But uh, if you're writing, I know a lot of people have trouble. Maybe they can only listen to instrumental music. Maybe yeah. they can't listen to anything at all. Depends. When I was writing, like when I was blogging the book, mm-hmm. and then when I was really, really finishing the book, um, Beyond Mama Bear, that I remember even sort of posting that there became a time in the writing and the editing and the crafting of it that only certain albums in the background were okay. Yeah, yeah. and so it's kind of that. Oftentimes it would be just classical, uh, but not, I don't know, not not too good classical because then that, I think about it. I, I'm curious about the music. It's exciting. Yeah, I'll, I'll, anyway, and it depends on, the, depends on what I'm doing. That's one of the frustrating things to me when I like even edit our podcast or edit audio is that there's no possibility for, in my mind, kind of any other feedback or input, audio or visual. You're just staring at, you know, bouncy lines on a computer and you're getting full your own voice input. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> that's isolating. Um, anyway, it, so is, it depends on what I'm doing. Speaking of the editing the podcast, uh, I'm sure our listeners know by now but last episode was cut entirely by you and I. The whole thing was edited, mastered by us, uh, and I'm sure they could tell by the the massive drop in quality. I don't think there was a damn bit of difference. <laughs> I don't. I I know for a fact that there's a damn bit of difference because it took me you know three hours or whatever, whereas previously uh, Jonah would just whip it out and in the background while I wasn't working. Yeah, well, that's a different. But I mean, in the quality, do you really hear a difference? I, I can't tell. And that's my fear is that my my ears don't work the same way. I'm sure there's there's an audio person who knows what's going on oh. and they can tell this sounds poorly yeah. for these three reasons. Yeah. But I don't know. It's like it's like when a wine person or a, and a non-wine person are totally. meet yeah. and the non-wine person says, tastes like grape. Yep. 
That's kind of where I am at the audio stage. I of my am life. too. I mean, we've said it. It's like talking to a surfer about the waves. No, I mean, we've talked about it before because even building this little studio and upgrading it and stuff, you know, my son Augie one time saying to me, Well, mom, you can hear the difference between this and this outside the studio. I can now hear the difference in here. It's a dead versus out there. It's bouncier. But that's only because I'm trying to listen and paying attention and I've learned some things. No, I can't tell the difference. No, I feel stupid about it. I am not an audio aficionado at all. I know our audio sound is generally good. Listen, I know the difference between pure shit and having our nice little isolated thing here. I've spent a lot of time and money making sure our sound is good, but I don't hear a difference between last week's and the previous week's. I really don't. Did you put it through a filter that Jonah... Or no, I had I built I built some new filters from scratch. So I've been uh, watching some YouTube videos, and Lovely. there's there's three things we're doing to our voices mm-hmm. uh, between when they go into the microphone. All right, there's my guy. We got to pause. I'm okay. sure the furnace guy is here. He's gonna knock again to have me sign paperwork when he leaves. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's see. Half my age, recordings. I have a very complicated file structure in here. Oof. Yeah, basically when, when we record the audio for this podcast, it goes directly into the microphone and it gets laid down on a couple of tracks. And then I take those tracks and I do three things to them. I apply a compressor, which takes the peaks and it, it evens them out so that uh, whether you're whispering or whether you're yelling, um, it's more palatable and it's it's nicer to the the speakers of the listener, um, and that's something that I think everyone does and all pieces of music do. I think I think almost everything goes to a com- through a compressor at some point. Um, I also add a limiter, which is um, whereas a compressor uh, compresses. It, it, you you talk about compressors as two to one or three to one. It takes a spike that was previously three units high and it turns it into a spike that was one unit high. Uh, a limiter is a hard stop, so it says cut off any sounds that are louder than this decibel. And does it cut them out like drops them, or does it bring them in? It on well, the limiter is like a filter. It it, it drops the um, audio. You're only going to get say say you've got a limiter at at zero decibels. Mm-hmm. It's going to cut out any volume above zero. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the last thing I do is an EQ, and Basically, I'm, I'm using a template that, that someone on YouTube put together. Um, it cuts out the very low frequencies that your microphone is recording that I'm assuming people probably can't hear. Uh, and then you're boosting the top end just a little bit. And then there's a little squiggly part in the middle that's important when you're dealing with people's voices. Um, for some reason, the uh, microphone picks up or amplifies certain frequencies of your voice that are not necessarily what you and I hear when we're just talking to each other, not through a microphone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so it's actually the the cleaning up process is um, pretty simple. There, I had to do some learning to figure that stuff out, but now all of that stuff I think is templatized. Um, the The real magic is actually having someone go through and make sure that all of the the transitions between cuts sound good, and I know. and that's that's something that uh, I kind of just winged it. I, I don't know. I, I threw some crossfades at some of them. I threw some some different things, and I don't know what's right or what's wrong. But I'm sure uh, with all the mail you and I received about this show, I'm sure we'll hear yeah, about we'll it. We'll hear all about it. We'll hear about it. <laughs> no, I, I I gotta know more about it because, and I still I'm I'm pretty proud of my audio book. Jonah did a fantastic job on that, but Jonah and I were both new at it, and 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 we. We said all along, we didn't know what we were doing. There's got to be a simpler way. I talked recently to an audio visual guy. He's more of a video guy. Mm-hmm. But about like a, there's got to be a gate or something that 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 cuts out breaths yeah. more readily than going in and literally so there, filling each breath I take with room noise. That is bullshit. There are tools for taking out breaths, and I've looked at them. But I thought, you know, with computers, I yeah. thought that it would be smart enough to just go through and recognize all right. the breaths perfectly. And it it gets some of the breaths, but not all of the breaths. And it doesn't get the whole breath. So yeah. you wind up you wind up cutting out part of the breath and then you've got it. like a weird I know unnatural. It. I know it. Exactly right. Which is why then you have that room noise. I was hearing some podcasters, I feel like it might have been guys that we both listened to recently about talking about the difference between a, a voice in your ears for a podcast or a radio show versus what we really hear in real life and how mm-hmm. we think we're trying to replicate that, but actually we're not really because it's, unre- it's, it's interesting. And I mean, I know that I think, 
Oh, hmm, someone's calling me. I can't take that call right now. Um, um, I got distracted. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. The the difference between the voices we hear. Oh, and the sound of our podcast. I don't know. We're, right. I'm sure we're fine. I actually think our. I I'm appreciate that you're going through all of that um, effort though to make it nice, Andrew. I yeah, well, great. partially. I mean, I, I'd say I'm I'm putting in uh, three quarters effort on this one. Well, okay, that's what I was going to say. In terms of audio book recording, I'm very proud of the sound of my audio book. I think in general, it sounds great. Mm-hmm. Jonah worked really hard on it. I would like to get more of that work, and I've been submitting for a lot of things lately and getting some good feedback in terms of voiceover. I haven't officially submitted with ACX because I don't know that I can deliver the product I need. You know what I mean? What's ACX? Uh, um, is that a a company? An audiobook group? What is that? It's audible, yeah. It's, audible. it's where you put okay. your book. The uh huh. Sorry, yeah. I was like, what is ACX? Uh, yep. It's the audiobook mm-hmm. b- b- clearinghouse. Where I don't know. It's where you. Um, it's audible. It's the back end of audible. It's where the books are made, huh. recorded and uploaded. And boy, oh boy. I mean, and it's anyway. Doesn't matter. It, but there's just I feel a little bit in over my head on that one. Is it like and that? I think it's a matter of investing in some software, and there will be easier ways for me to deal with that. Yeah. But part of my problem with this audio stuff, you say it's investing in software and it's clear to me that these tools exist and they're out there because I can see, uh, you know, uh, software advertises having this feature yeah. and that feature. But the UI of audio stuff is so foreign to me. I know. Um there's there's a humongous learning curve to climb just yep. to figure out how to use this stuff. I literally am in on my list of things to do in a day, Andrew. One of my on my like daily list that keeps getting moved is sit and watch maybe an hour a day on that on on educating myself. It's it's knowable. We can learn it. YouTube videos, uh, Khan Academy. There's nothing I can't learn by sitting there, right, and mm-hmm. learning it. But I know the, the learning curve has freaked me out, and so I continue to. By the way, I continue to do this, and I'm wondering if there's going to be a moment. I don't use InDesign anymore. I don't even have that software anymore installed on my computer. I gave it I gave it up. So right now I am cutting and pasting and duct taping things with pages mm-hmm. with uh what's it called? Um not Excel but numbers. Yep. Okay, so I'm totally on Mac because I have I don't have the Office suite and I don't have the Adobe suite right now. That's unusual for me. I've always had it. Mm-hmm. Kind of limping along seeing how long I can go without investing in you know, InDesign. Photoshop, totally. any of it, any of it. Seeing how long I can go, I don't think it's forever. But one thing I recently learned, there is a, <laughs> so I use pages for all my design work and I have been just putting out design shit constantly, even for other people. Like recently a comic reached out in great distress, like, can you help me? I'm in a pinch. My graphic designer blew me off. I, I need to get this poster together for my show in a couple of weeks. Can you do this real, you know, I'll pay you a favor, whatever. And I went, yep, I can do it. So I've been doing a lot of design work in pages. And then I wonder if I'm spending, if I'm like wasting time duct taping things together when I should just sit down, invest in learning how that software works, getting that software and be, you know what I mean? Especially mm-hmm. with the audio. Like maybe well, I should I, just I spent suck it a up. a lot of time thinking and I've criticized you in the past for using pages. I spent a lot of have time. Have you? I don't think you have out loud. Maybe you've just thought it. Probably just thought it. Thanks. Anytime. Uh, that there's a specific tool that should be used for a specific job. Yeah. And and using pages or keynote or PowerPoint or whatever to put together your graphics is is wrong. Yeah, just uh, it is. fundamentally, yep. spir- spiritually wrong. Yep. Um, and the more things I, the more new skills I'm trying to learn, and the more things I have to do, uh, the less using the right tool seems to matter as much as just shipping the thing and getting it out. This is right? exactly where I have to and go. and pages. Uh, whether it's the the right tool or not for the work you're doing, the fact that you know how to use it and you can do it quickly is a huge win. In the, I mean, it's a it's a big reason to use Pages. Even at my old job, I people would stand behind me, like not design people, like those programmers and stuff, right? I mean, they're so smart and so creative in their own way. But when they needed a poster made or like a letter sent, you know, or a booklet made, they just thought I was magical. And I remember one time a guy standing over going, wow, you're really good at that, right? And I went, oh, just super fast. Exactly right. I just know it. I am not. The good thing is that the interface is close enough that I also know in design. I'm not as adept in it. That's just the true story. So, right. I, and over the years at that job, and then because I had students working for me who I would sort of mentor on the big heavy lifting in design 
um, projects, but because those were labor intensive, we would pay students to do it, and I would be there literally to answer the questions, mentoring and going, teaching them shortcuts, and then they would learn shortcuts and teach them to me. But in general, right? So I got worse at it. So that's exactly right. I can fly through pages. It's embarrassing, and I use it like so high level. You're totally right, by the way. Image felt, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Fuck. I was like, okay, I've been doing out. computers well, for a while. I know, this but actually... I also was like getting bleary eyed. You know what I mean? Like I said, the past few weeks, I have really spent a lot of that time staring at the computer, having less human interaction. And then your brain does go a little cuckoo. It totally goes cuckoo. Whew, you gotta walk away. And there's there's certain things that we get our mindset about uh, the things we think it can do, the things we think it can't do. Uh, we were working, Delaney and I were working on our save the dates. And there's a website out there. Uh, I don't particularly recommend it, but we're using it. It's called Zola. Um, and they've got tools for uploading your guest list so that when they ship you your save the dates, all the envelopes are already addressed and you just slap a stamp on it and send it out. Uh-huh. Um, and they've got this tool. Delaney's been working on this guest list from her iPhone. And it'll just take your contacts and it'll upload them to the guest list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it'll keep, you know, whatever you've got the address listed on, that all flows through. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my job and just the way my brain works, I always think in spreadsheets. So I wasn't uploading any contacts. I was putting it all in a CSV to upload to put the CSV into. But but none of that capability to upload a CSV is exposed in the iPhone app or the iPad app. It's It's only viewable from the desktop browser, which isn't obvious when you're using the the app. It looks like the only way to get contacts into this thing are to type them in or to upload them from your your phone contacts. Uh, and it's these these little things and hacks that make uh, tools unintuitive. Uh, mm-hmm. But but in the end, we're, we all revert back to what we know. I know spreadsheets, so mm-hmm. I'm like, of course, there's got to be a way for me, the spreadsheet man, <laughs> right. to do this because I know that there's a spreadsheet right. person in right. every company who's right. thought about this and right. they said, if only I had a... The CSV is going to talk to that, whatever they're doing there. CSV is right. going to talk to that tool. Right. No and one doesn't. Delaney, she's she's not a programmer. She spends a lot of time on her computer just because everyone does for, for their job. You know, a lot of her work is going through documents and filing things with courts and that sort of thing. Um, but the way she interacts with websites that aren't the, the U.S. courthouse website or whatever tends to be through her phone, Right. Yeah, I know. Right. And that's funny, the difference. I mean, that's a huge thing. Okay. I've been working on my websites a lot and Mm -hmm. seriously checking and making sure that it looks good on the phone application. Oh, it's a pain in the butt. Well, the good thing is it's not because honestly, I wish they would sponsor us, but it's a true story. Squarespace is so fantastic. It really is optimized for mobile seriously right Mm -hmm. out of the box as they say but there's a difference right and learning the little tricks and tools on because i'm gonna certainly do it on my desktop i'm gonna do all that back end work but then checking it and learning how it how it populates onto the mobile interface i mean that's amazing that when it to tell you the truth it's amazing when it does work yeah right it's amazing how much stuff does talk to each other but yeah stuff like that with that wedding app i find things like that i was trying to just think while you were talking there was a website recently that was very janky and it shouldn't have been it was like wow what is going on i can't remember what it was but like sometimes when i run into that bad user interface or not intuitive to me Mm -hmm. it's just interesting it's an ongoing problem where the capabilities of mobile are yep. oversold, yep. Uh, and it's not it's not clear that you're going to get a totally different experience if you look at this on a different device. Right, 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 totally. Yeah, I've had a totally different experience, but yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember when I first had you hook me up with the Instagram, though, and I couldn't believe it was only mobile, mm-hmm. which it basically right. is. It, That's it still also is. weird. It still totally is. You can, you can, yeah. you can go to their website, but yeah. uh, it, it... Forget it. Doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, and those about... dating apps, those dating apps, remember that were mobile forcing only. you right to go into mobile only? I encountered something like that recently, too, where it was absolutely mobile only, and the website was just there as a placeholder to tell you, go... Oh, Venmo. Yeah. Forget it. Well, I can tell you that one of the projects I'm working on for my job job, uh, we are a Chrome extension first. Uh, we, we've put work into building a website, and it's mm-hmm. not... Uh, it, it does some basic stuff like allows someone to register and put together an account. But the actual way people are going to interact with our product is through a Chrome extension. It's going to be the, the primary method. Interesting. And part of that is hmm. um, it's a lot easier to control the experience of a Chrome extension. Is it? 
and it's a lot. When, when you talk about a mobile app or a Chrome extension, um, there's fewer expectations about the amount of functionality it has to I have, suppose. Uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Uh, it, it needs to do one thing and it needs to do one thing well versus a website. There's, there's a lot of different components. You have to, I've actually learned what, when you're not using Squarespace, when you're building a website from scratch, what it takes to make a, a website designed oh. for desktop oh. uh, work on a phone. I can't imagine. And basically Gross. there's, there's some rules you set that say when the screen is larger than this number of uh-huh. pixels, lay things out this way, yep. you literally have to re-lay out all of the different components mm-hmm. uh, by hand. I thought I thought going in that there was just a tool that said, you know, like a little checkbox, like uh, optimize this for mobile, right. and that's not the oh, way it works. Oh, no, I know. I mean, I remember from back in the day when I first got into even, like, freaking, what was it, Fireworks web design. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Who who? No, that's the miracle of Squarespace. Because you do, if you get into Squarespace, and I always say, like, don't mess with the template. Respect the template. That I wish to God. <laughs> respect the template on any of those sites. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you can personalize it, but respect the template. Yeah, like, don't do don't anything call, crazy. And they won't let you. That's the cool thing is, like, they limit you on the number of fonts you can freaking have on that page because they know how ugly... <laughs> Websites are getting, right? So you can go back. You can kind of dig deep in Squarespace, and you can choose some of your options for mobile optimization, and some of it is the pixel you know, like image this big at this point, break the page if you're doing any kind of parallax, which by the way, I just took off my site because it was real annoying. I mean, it looked modern for a minute. I don't even think it does anymore, but that parallax, it looked, it kind of felt necessary to have that movement for a minute. And then I looked at it recently, especially on mobile when I was showing someone, no, look, here's my voice demo. If I'm sending my voice demo out to people, I want to make it as easy as possible for them on my website. So I took off that parallax. It's just like, here's my voice demo right up top. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, there are ways to, you can customize it or you can, you can manipulate it on kind of on the back end of Squarespace about what that mobile interface looks like. But, but they, but it is so limited because they know it's great. It's like Big Brother in a way, but it's like they really do know. Respect them. They know better about what you will do to break and ruin and make a website look ugly. <laughs> Don't. do I, Really. Okay. Yeah, I know. I wish they should sponsor us. Everybody should. Okay. Um, I think that's enough of the technical talk, Andrew. I got one more thing, and right. I, I have to get it off my chest because okay. I sat with it all last show, and I didn't sure. mention it. I got some beef with Apple. As, oh, as ever. Um, see, so, you're going to talk about technical. Right. I know. It's going to be quick. I, okay. It's going to be quick. Uh, so on, let's say, January 6th, that's an exact date, I took my computer in because my battery had swollen. It looked like it would be so, a flight okay, risk. I mean, this is not short. What the hell happened there? How did your battery get swole? I, Pumping it weight just, at the gym? I don't know. I don't know. Overuse? I'm trying to make this quick. No I know, interruptions. But, it's, but that's the point. There's so many mysteries <laughs> along the way. I'm so worried now about swelling my fucking battery, and I didn't know that was something I had to worry about. It's probably not. It's a... Uh, what did you do? I don't know. I don't know. I baby my computer. I, that's my point. Okay. Okay. Anyways, battery got I swollen. I took story. it in. Uh, to the local Genius Bar, mm-hmm. they said, we're going to have to send this to Texas to be repaired, to have your battery replaced. I said, fine. Um, that day, I decided I couldn't be without a computer, so I bought a new one that I was hopefully going to be able to return within Apple's 14-day return window. Uh, my my computer went to Apple very quickly. They turned it around in a day, sent it back. UPS lost it, and they acknowledged that they lost it. Um uh, they acknowledged when I filed this claim. So I, I did the claim thing with UPS. They wouldn't pay me because when you ship something and it gets lost, that money goes back to the sender. And the sender is expected to, to make things right. So, like, if you had ordered something from Amazon, the sender would send you a se- – Amazon would send you a second one if it got lost in the mail. Yes. But so not anyways, Apple. Not Apple. I went, I went back to Apple. I said, look, I've got this claim. It's been approved. And they say, we actually have our own shipping investigations team uh, they're not going to be able to get to it for seven to ten days. Uh, oh, God. They eventually got to it. They said, oh, yes, there actually is an open claim with UPS. It is indeed lost, just as I had told them in the very beginning. But I had to wait seven to ten days to figure that out. And moral of the story is they were supposed to send me a new MacBook. Uh, today is January 30th. It is still not even shipped yet. I've been without a computer for, not without a computer entirely, but without my computer for more than 25 days. Uh, or actually tomorrow will be 25 days, and I got beef. Not happy about it. I am insane about it to the point that I can't, I didn't even want you to talk about it. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe it. I hate everything about it. 
Starting with, why does your battery swell? I have Christ no idea. Almighty. And you think that Apple said, fine, we replace it, it's fine. Like, now it's going to work. That's what you think was being shipped to you, back to you, as a totally fixed computer. Right. Did they manage to mess up, like, fix your keyboard while they were at it? They, did they address that? Or no. are we still I, pretending that That, that's that wasn't fine? part of the repair. Because honestly, Andrew, the double E thing. <laughs> double E, double R. T-I I, double got her. It, it, it won't go away. Last night, I, I, just, I said bet to somebody, which is the perfect response. When it types beat, and I didn't notice it, <laughs> you know, I just look like an idiot. It I look very, like very, uh, dry, sh- yeah. Dwight Shroop. Very Shroop. Shroop. Stop it. Shroot. Shroot. Bears I, beats Battlestar Galactica. Right. And I do like beats, but fuck it. I, I don't, <laughs> you know, bet was the perfect response to this thing. I was saying beat. Come on. Oh, okay. So, I know. So There's your I mean, story. What is it? It's a, it's a comedy of errors. Is uh, it comic? When, when is that? It is at this point because. Okay, good, because it makes me mad. I don't know. I, I've, I've got past the initial stress of it all, and I committed. I took back the computer I bought from Apple that I was going to use for that week, mm-hmm. and I bought an, another Apple laptop from a different vendor because it was the same computer but $250 off. So... I, I've got the computer, and I've committed to this new computer. It's the one we recorded on last week. It's the one we re- we're recording on now. Uh, does and it then, have a better keyboard? Does it have an it does have a better. Keyboard? It's the it's the 16 inch yeah. MacBook Pro. I'm jealous too because I don't even have a monitor, so I'm jealous of that size of that thing. It's it's been uh, it's been good so far. I've been using it for 20 something days, uh, and I like it. But I I can't recommend that anyone give any money to Apple because I'm super annoyed with them. Super but annoyed. You'll remember that this this problem started with. UPS and it's the it's only the mismanagement of the problem after the fact. Yeah, that's true. where it became Apple's fault. And it boy is it at Apple's fault right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right, UPS losing a package. I mean, I am stunned more often by the fact that packages get to us at all. Mm-hmm. I am. I, I really. Yeah, you I can am, send something from here to China, and ninety nine times out of a hundred, it's going to get there. Yep, and you can send something via the post office, and it gets to somebody locally the next damn day. I mean, right. I am amazed by it. I I feel like I am in awe and humbled by how that all works. It's a massive, massive system going on. And I'm it so is, impressed it with it, but then to know that once in a while, a Macintosh Bush book professional costing a lot of money and you're like super tag that package i'm sure mm-hmm. as like insurable and de- can just go missing wowza that's i'm surprised that it's gone missing too it seems to be lost lost because i've got my icloud find my mac thing on and yeah. if it ever comes online it's supposed uh, to send me an alert interesting and it hasn't come online uh-huh. there you go that's interesting right because that's of course your first thought is somebody just recognizes the heft of that and takes it home Sure. But if they're going to use it, you're going to know about it. So Ever? I, I don't know if the, the UPS man got tired of delivering packages right. and just threw it in the dumpster. In the dumpster. Or, or what's going on here. But, they, I mean, somewhere is my old MacBook just out in the world. When I was a child for a certain amount of time, it was very much like paper route delivery. But we, my sister and I, organized by my mother, delivered magazines. Mm-hmm. And we got giant boxes of magazines at our home, and then we would put them into clear bags. This was back in the very early 80s. So if your mom subscribed to Mademoiselle and Good Housekeeping and Family Fun, we would put those three in a bag. We had these manifest sheets. And then we would go, and it was mostly in apartment buildings, mm-hmm. and we would go and hang these bags on the apartments. And there were some times, and I was a child, where I just couldn't find an address, and we would, like, you know— my mom would drop us off at certain, can you imagine this? Would drop us off at certain checkpoints. This is like a foggy memory in my mind, but I know what happened. And and there were times that I just couldn't find an apartment or a house and very much at the end of the day would just stash those freaking magazines in a garbage can. I would absolutely just like, I'd have five left over. Time was up. <laughs> I couldn't anymore. I would get to the verge of crying because I just couldn't find this thing. And I would very much just go, okay, I'm just going to throw these away. And never once heard about it. It all felt very removed from any kind of authority anyway. Sure. And it very much felt like in this day that like, eh, Amazon will replace that magazine if I throw it away. So when you just said that, that brought back that memory for me. That maybe a UPS driver just tossed it. Maybe it fell down a... And I I know that delivery people hate our apartment building because we've got these lockers that oh. they have to put packages into, uh-huh. and they have to type in our address and oh, whatever. Yeah. And those those lockers send us an alert that says, "Hey, you've got a package in the locker." Nice. Uh, except that these lockers fill up, and then the UPS, Amazon, whoever guy 
they're you know they're they're tired they're pissed off it's been a long day and now they got to deal with this thing that's now broken yeah, yeah maybe yeah. the the people in the office have gone home so they couldn't take them back to the front office if they wanted to they just throw it in the room they just throw it in sure. the room which is bad for us the residents because we don't get any alert that the package ever arrived and you know? it's not secure which is the whole point of those right letters. oh yeah I remember that that's a familiar kind of that's a familiar kind of New York mailroom story. Is you got your locking mailboxes and did, but ultimately what ends up is the guy just throws the freaking package right there. Right. <laughs> you lucky. <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, really, also in this world of delivery, and people are so 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 paranoid. People, especially of a certain age, and now with the ring doorbells, right? I mean, my neighbor constantly is telling me when there is a package on my front porch or getting it for me. Like today, you picked up that package. I had gotten an alert at eight in the morning that that package had been delivered. I just hadn't opened my front door yet. It's my new squatty potty. I knew it would be fine. It'll be you there. A Potty, potty. You need a squatty with, potty for your bidet? You know what? Now that it's a full spa vacation yeah. in there, I'm like, hell yeah. A full spa vacation. Yeah, no, it is, Andrew. <laughs> I was going to ask and if you had an update. I got two settings. I got, oh, my God. I've been telling jokes. About, I got two settings on that remote, but I'm a single lady, so one setting is for fun. And one Ooh. setting is for business. I'm not going anywhere near that. That's what I'm saying. Exactly right. Yikes. And but no, I need the squatty potty for the full. Now, oh, my hemorrhoids are better, and so I might as well have the full experience. So anyway, my point is, my neighbor will sometimes come <sighs> over. I know. I got the the heebie-jeebies. Okay, Andrew, it's just the human body. <laughs> like honestly, yeah, but it's we, your human body. Okay, well that's fine. You know what? We are speakers of the truth and I want to tell you that I feel like I'm actually doing good for society when I talk about hemorrhoids because so many people go <laughs> oh god me too and it's a secret shame I went to the urgent care for my hemorrhoids last March and I was so 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 ashamed I had never spoken about it and then I realized oh it's not I don't know it's okay people get them <laughs> people get them and we don't talk about it and you know what it's a real pain in the ass I mean literally yeah um it's like the jokes write themselves I was they really do with that, with that freaking bidet. They really kind of do. Although last night, once again, I went out and I just did the bidet set. I did three minutes plus on just the bidet. And once again, it's just hard to tell. I have a feeling that would kill if it was in front of actual people, but it was in front of comics. And like literally, it was and you a room know of comics only can't comics. A, can't afford bidets. And if they, if, thing, if and they, they had hemorrhoids, they'd already be talking laughter. about them. Mm, I don't know, man. I still think I'm preaching truth on that one. <laughs> what I was trying to say is that in the day and age where my... I am less worried about things like packages from Amazon because if someone had stolen that package off my porch, I trust that I just call up Amazon and go, hey, it never came here, and I'll get another one tomorrow, right? Uh, my neighbor, who is older than I am, sees a package, sees I haven't picked it up, will come and grab it for me, which sometimes causes me consternation because I don't see her for a couple of days, and we keep missing each other, and it's like I was, I was waiting for that thing. So in this day and age, I just sort of trust that in – that big shipping will, you know, freaking take care of it. <laughs> the fact that your computer, I mean, my life's blood, that's the thing I care about more than right. anything. It can just go missing. That's heartbreaking to me, is all I'm saying. It is it is heartbreaking. And I'm sure this happens more than it more than just to me. And there's a lot of people who couldn't afford to go out and buy a second Apple computer just because they're gonna be without theirs, you know? Completely. And all their this is another thing, you know, I'm I'm super involved in tech and I'm very conscientious of having backups and Backup. multiple backups. That's what I was thinking. Uh, and most people don't. Nope. <laughs> I, I Exactly right. And the fact that you can just trust that, right, okay, this thing is a brick now, but I have everything. I can just reinstall it on my machine. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody has that. I, I Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. I know. It just freaks me out. Um, what else? What else, Andrew? I don't know. We're getting uh, close on time. We I know. Can, I was just going to say, any old time. The, so the wedding planning is coming along well despite different interfaces. I have a question. The wedding planning is going swimmingly. Am uh, I going to be invited? <laughs> not if you keep talking about your your fun setting on your bidet, you won't. Okay. That's uh, that's, you, you that's become, not nice to think that there's anything I could do. Do you remember you, your opening you, about how what you was become your opening about? more of a liability than a uh, than yeah. an asset to the wedding? Mm, I heard what you did there. Did you? What yeah. was your opening about? <laughs> was it about me being good or bad? It's about you being good. So do you want to hear it again? Well, no, but I'll listen to it again when I have to cut this thing. But my question is, like, saying, see, that's the opposite of unconditional love. Saying that I, that I now that is, have to that compete. That is conditional love. Yeah. Now that I have to watch my P's and Q's to get a fucking invite to your wedding. I was asking that legitimately because people nowadays may have small weddings. They may have family-only weddings. I should think that even if you have a family-only wedding, I would be invited. But I don't know. Miss well, Hill very, does not consider me family. You're, so you're very, I was asking for a good fucking reason. I was asking humbly. And then you told me that maybe not. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Good. Well, then I don't have to worry about what to wear. That's all this week, folks. We'll, <laughs> we'll see you next time on Half My Age. <laughs> Bye, Andrew. Goodbye, Mrs. Philpon. <laughs> <laughs>